All right, guys, welcome back to another video. It's been a while since you guys have seen the Glizzard here. We're going to talk about some blower stuff and some badass stuff we have planned for this car coming up. But before we get started in today's video, I do want to let you guys know we got our training day rodeo coming up. I'll put the flyer on the screen. First link in the description below will be to our Facebook event page for that. If you guys are interested in doing storm work, send us an email. Let us know you're coming. Ask any questions, we'll answer them. We're gonna have it here at LS Nasty. We're gonna have all the equipment here. We're gonna do some training, get you guys in our database, get you guys signed up. This is 2023, it's time to put some money in your pocket. It's a badass side gig, all these guys here do it. And uh, as you can see, it built some badass race cars from it. So if you guys got a race car at home, want to go a little bit faster, I suggest you do some storm work. First link in the description below, check it out. All right guys, so what we have here is the Glizzard. There is a lot to talk about. I've mentioned before that's going down to Cameron Johnson race cars. It was actually supposed to go down on Monday, but Cameron and I both agreed. He's got a bunch of stuff going on down there. I'm gonna try to get this blower front drive and accessory drive stuff wrapped up before it goes down. So we're pushing it back another week or two and we're gonna get the stuff wrapped up. I got some stuff on order. Uh, some questions, people are like, I don't know, I don't even like talking about it to be completely honest with you. People are like, man, John just can't find a chassis guy. He just can't find a chassis guy. He's tough to, John must be terrible to work with, this and that. And like, honestly, being 100% transparent, I feel like I'm very easy to work with from the side of being a customer. I pay, I never bitch at the price. I just pay it. I pay a large portion up front usually. So like there's no one ever going out of pocket. I check back in and pay more. So like I'm never in the hole. A lot of times I'm like above the hole or like have a credit, if that makes sense. If parts are needed, I supply parts overnight only. I only overnight parts. So for customer wise, and, and I don't have like crazy high expectations. I have all of these cars around here and like compare these cars to like, compare the, compare the black sheep to like uh, a Bickle LDR car, a Larry Jeffers LDR car. It is, that's like a two in a, Larry Jeffers car is like a 10. That's like how they rank quality wise. So I know when I'm going to some of these places, I'm not going to get a 10 quality. I'm just looking for a solid four or five, you know? <laughs> that, honestly, I, if it's in there and it does the job and it works great, I'm good to go. My thing is timeline too. I, I used to be like kind of aggressive with the timeline, but in the past, I'd say two years, I've pretty much just given up on that. And my mindset is like, hey, if it takes a while, it takes a while, let's just get it done, let's make sure it's good. So, this was at Chassis shop, shop for a year. After a year, I was just like, you know what, at least if I have it here, I can work on it and I can do some video stuff. I got no hard feelings about it. I'm just being transparent. It's my job to be transparent with you guys. It's frustrating from my end because after the car sits there for a year, you like it's just like this is how it was when it went there. Some stuff got done on the inside. Some stuff we got to redo. It just is what it is. I feel like a year is enough time. I mean, literally, if if you work on it one hour a day for like the work days, that's like 250 hours you'd have in this thing. <laughs> that's a lot of time. I don't know. So that's just kind of where I'm at with it. Going down to Cameron Johnson's, it's super business oriented. Pay him. This is what I need. This, 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 this. He says drop off date here. Pick up date here. I don't know how what more you ask for. So if we add anything else, obviously that changes. He knows everything he's got to do with this car. He asked for a bunch of pictures. He asked for a list of what needs to get done. He asked for an inventory of parts. He, the real deal. Very fortunate that he's gonna able to squeeze me in and, and work on it. And compared to the stuff that he does, this is like a very small fraction of what he does. So I'm excited about that. I hate the whole, oh, you go through chassis guys, this and that. If I don't do my job, I don't get paid. Other people don't do their job, I pick my shit up and I take it somewhere else. Unfortunately, I get a bad rap for it. If I get a bad rap for it, I guess I do. I don't know. I feel like my standards have gotten lower and lower, but they're still there. So now my standards are just get it done so I can race it in faster than a year. And that's kind of where I'm at with it. So no hard feelings. It's business. I don't let personal, like my personal life and my personal relationship with people don't get affected by business. I'm, thankfully, I've been taught that business is business. 
I can do business with you. If it doesn't work out, I just won't do no more business with you. It doesn't affect our relationship with anyone else. The chassis shops that I've had issues with before, I still see the people at the track. I shake their hand. I say, what's up? Ask them how they're doing, how the kids in them, how your mom and them, do all that stuff. Is what it is. But, again, it's just, I'm fortunate enough to be taught early on that business is business. Race cars are my business. I got to treat it like a business. So if stuff doesn't get done, it doesn't get done and on to the next one. Enough of that, I guess. Is that, hopefully that clears the air, Dave. Is that clear the air? Like so. everyone's got a pretty good understanding of uh, of where we are with it. And we'll leave the rest up to your imagination. So yeah. All right. So Cameron's going to pretty much uh, have the car chassis wise pretty much done. When we get it back from CJ Race Cars, it's going to be like wired up, plumb it and do some like little odds and end things and then we'll be good to go so he's mounting all the body front end doors fuel tank uh gas throttle pedal brake pedal harnesses uh wing redoing the parachute mounts um uh, redoing some of the floor structure uh drive shaft loop um yeah i mean a bunch of stuff so when we get it done it when we get it back it's, it's going to be good and like the timeline that he gave me was much 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 faster than a damn year so i'm all good with it excited to have it done and back and not have to dedicate any more time to this because i'd rather dedicate time to being at the racetrack so you guys know what the deal is with this car it's a two-seater car plan on doing ride-alongs with it it's got two race tech seats in there so whoever's riding with me will be comfortable and safe in there power plant big ass ls tkm built frankenstein heads as you can see it's got this enormous 1471 blower on it it's my first blower car, we're doing EFI. I had TCAM Performance make this badass plate. Give them a little preview of this plate. So this right here is um, our top injector plate and also a little bit blower hat spacer. You need this on EFI because you need to have pre-blower fuel. The blower needs to be cooled and lubricated by the fuel itself. So everyone's just like, oh man, put EFI on it. Well, you can't just put injectors down here in the runners. You need to have injectors above the blower. So the plan is we'll have a set of either like billet atomizer, like 325s, or maybe a set of Bosch 210s up here, and then 350 or 550s or 575s uh, down here. Uh, that way we can turn these guys on, cool the blower down. It'll just be like some global fuel and then Oh, well, majority of our fuel and then fuel trim will be down from our billet atomizers there. I like to run billet atomizers in both and then just run one fuel system with one pre fuel pressure regulator, which would be ideal. If you run the Bosch 210s, they can't handle the base pressure that a billet atomizer runs. Like having 90 pounds of base pressure, you'll just blow that sucker apart. So uh, <laughs> if I get some 325s or whatever, we'll just run it where it's just like one giant fuel line that goes across back and down to the other one. So that's the setup. I went to TKM with this plate here. Uh, I got this off Holly and uh, this was great. Does the job. As you can see, it looks very similar, but it left some big gaps in the back of the blower and the bolt holes didn't line up. So this is what's so cool about dealing with TKM is I went up there and I brought the blower and I brought the intake and I brought this. And I'm like, hey guys, I open up like the side door, which is like where they have their engineering department. Uh, and I was like, hey guys, uh, I need your help. And they're like, oh great, what now? Because they've done, um, they've done these as well. Dang. So Matt drew this up in CAD. This is our T7 flange for our Hearts Turbo. So we put that up there. Matt already drew it up in CAD. They cut it out on their CNC because they got a bunch of machines up there. Badass. Didn't have anything drawn up CAD, but I just brought this up there. They laser scanned it in and they're like, oh yeah, we can make this work. And they made me this plate in like a week. So as you can see, it does the same thing. It houses the injectors, but it also seals the blower off from these big gaps I had because 1471, 871, I guess, I don't know all the blower stuff. It's supposed to be like the same size, but this and this didn't fit with the blower. Mm. Now it all fits. So big shout out to T-Camp for getting this done. This is nice. It's one piece. I could have made some janky shit that looked like Hammer dog shit. Thankfully, I got TKM in my corner to make sure that that's not an issue. So we got the pre-blower fueling taken care of and figured out, which I'm super excited. We got our carbon hat, which look at the size of these butterflies. A LS motor, like 76 millimeter throttle body, 
big ones are 90 millimeter throttle bodies. Really big ones are 105 millimeter throttle bodies, which is like what the uh, the Black Sheep has. And then like Mondo or the 125 or 123s that Wilson makes, which are like huge. We have that on the Bad Apple. Mm -hmm. Nothing else we have has a throttle body that big except for Slick Rick, which is something different. That's like a, a Visner, like oval style. And then this thing has three absolutely insanely massive butterflies so you're speaking for like an ls engine this is like one of these is plenty but now we have three so this is going to be insane you're literally going to crack the throttle like that much of things and be like wow like throttle whacking the shit out of it just like this like yeah ah, 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 ah. that's i mean ah. i mean that's that's pretty much what's going to happen so this is absolutely insane i got this blower hat from um uh, Uncle Jim, Jim Kyle, the guy we got the uh, screw blower off of. So he's got all the blower goodies. Yeah, he's got all. I mean, I smoking deal on this. This hat is very, very high dollar. I got an insane deal. So I'm not really too uh, up to par my blower stuff. So it's all kind of new to me. I'm trying to get it figured out of what I need. But the first thing that I do know is that nothing fits at this point in time. So RCD makes this hub, which you guys have seen me talk about before. And all it is is just like the hub, something you'd see off of like an Innovators West or an ATI balancer, but there's nothing on there. You press this ring on, this has your timing markers, this has your four magnets for your crank pickup, and it's good to go. You put your blower pulley on there, and that is your balancer. You don't run a balancer. The belt actually acts as a balancer. So supposedly, I got all this stuff from Alky Diggers, and... I'll be 100% transparent with you as far as like their tech department. It's not really, you're on your own. You gotta figure your, your own shit out and then just call them and be like, hey, you got this? And they'd be like, oh no. And they'd be like, hey, you got this? I'm like, yeah, I'm like, all right, I'll take it. So I was informed they only make one balancer hub or hub or drive hub. So as you can see, this dead space back here is not ideal. And I put my crank support on there and that didn't line up either because the stands are the wrong length. And I called and I was like, hey, what do we got for stands? And they're like, ah, seven and a half. I'm like, well, these are five. They're like, we don't even make those. I'm like, I got them from you. They're like, ah, eh. you want these other ones? And I'm like, no, no, I'll just figure it out at this point. So I decided to take it on under my own task now to figure this out. So I measured my snout. For the blower and this is a 5.6 i switched it up to a 3.9 which is going to bring everything back the goal is to have the blower pulley as close to the front cover as possible because that will take a lot of load off the front of the blower i know i'm running the crank support but that's still i want as much help as i can because this big ass blower is probably going to break this crank in half i know it's coming it's going to happen when it happens i don't know but it's going to break the crank I want to try to go as long as I can without breaking a $3,000 crankshaft because that does not sound like a good time. And then who knows what else it takes out with it. This is racing. This is just happens. So we're going to back this up as far as we can. I'm going to look and see if they have an offset uh, blower pulley because uh, I'm going to really back it up like an inch and a half. And this is a half inch inside that already. So that'll only be moving this one inch back. So if I can get another inch or half inch, I'll be able to take like an inch and a half or two inches off the back of this hub. And I'm just going to take it to TKM and ask them if they could just put it in the lathe and turn it down and get it to where it presses on where this ring is like almost up against this front cover also we're taking this front cover off in the double roller timing chain and we're putting an innovators west belt drive on there which is absolutely badass we got one for the black sheep we got one for the glizzard they look absolutely sick we should have them here next week and they're going to give us a lot more adjustability uh, and reliability and durability uh, with making any sort of like cam timing changes or anything like that really stepping it up here for 2023 if you can't tell so once we get all of that shoved back in there, I will then get a measurement for our stands for our crank support. And I will go up to TKM with one stand and say, hey, you see this? That's not correct. I need you guys to make me one that's correct. And they will say, not a problem. And then like a couple hours later, they'll be like, here are your stands to the correct measurements. And then I'll screw them on there and I'll put everything together. And voila, we are good to go. Put a belt on there, put a belt guard on there, put a belt tensioner on there, and the blower 
dealio is done. All we have left to do is stick injectors in it and build some headers, and we are done with the power plant of this. How awesome does that sound? Does it sound like a lot? Mm -hmm. Does it sound like I know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. How terrifying is it that I know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I really been doing crazy, my research. Crazy time to be alive. Crazy, crazy time. The turbo stuff, believe it or not, <clears throat> you just make air go from here to the turbo and then fr from the front side of the turbo to here and the back side of the turbo to there. Yeah, think it's, about how easy people's lives could be if they just had a turbo LS. You know what's crazy? People think the turbo stuff is complicated. This is so much more complicated than the turbo stuff. So much more complicated. <clears throat> you have to get it right. So the first thing I did was I realized that Get in once then. Am I annoying you? I'm sleeping in here. First, the first thing I did was he was out. I knew we had an issue there. So the plan will be to get all this stuff fixed. By the end of this, we'll take the same piece of metal and we will hold it up here, and everything will line up perfect. We'll slap a belt on it with a tensioner, and we'll be good to go. So there's a blizzard update. I'm going to try to get all this stuff wrapped up before it goes down to Cameron Johnson Race Cars because he's going to add a fuel tank. And I'd like to have my um, oil pump and fuel pump drive on this thing. Good to go. Ready to go 100%. So he knows where to make the fuel tank. And then we could just get back here and make lines for stuff and go. It's going to be simple, like no turbo drain lines or anything like that. We're going to have a, a, a fuel feed and a return. <coughs> and it's external wet sump, so we'll have... A fuel filter mounted, oil in system, and, and you know, we're used to like running shit all over the place with a turbo feed and turbo drain and you know, all this other stuff. This is, um, we'll see how long it hangs in there. I mean, this is a big blower for this motor. Everyone's been telling me, run the 871, run the 871. No, this is what I got. So, this is a standard helix 1471. <clears throat> I, I plan to upgrade to like a high helix or like a Cabelco or something like that, but. They say all the blower stuff is the same, so once you get it figured out, you just take your hub off and swap the blower and everything's the same. That's that's the game plan, that's the goal. So fingers crossed that's the case. And uh, I just want something where we can go like, have the ability to go 450s, give someone a ride along, maybe go like a 490, 480, but have the ability to, if like we go out there on a Thursday night test and team want a grudge race, have the ability to go 450. I feel like a 450 car, especially for how light it is. Carbon front end, carbon doors, carbon trunk, carbon bumper. It should be all right. So that's going to wrap it up. Just wanted to give you an update on the Blizzard. Sorry if this video is talking, but I was actually working on this, getting all my measurements and getting stuff ordered today. So you guys can kiss my ass if you said it was just talking because I did some work. So that's going to wrap it up. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys are interested in going to the rodeo, please make a note or, or respond to the facebook page so i know who's coming or send us an email so thank you guys so much for watching come on subscribe see you guys in tomorrow's upload